The reason why I need you to understand or to have the full understanding of favor is because favor is the only currency that can buy anything in the kingdom of God. And this morning, I need you to understand the dimensions of favor. After we understand, you understood the description of favor, what really favor is, let us see some of the dimensions in which favor work so that you and I, we can claim these dimensions to the glory of the living God. The first one I'm going to begin on here, it's uh, the medical dimension. I'll talk about the medical dimension. And the Bible tells me, at the pool of Bethesda, many important people were there. And they were waiting for the steering of the waters. Because at a certain time, an angel came and steered the water. When the water was steered up, whoever jumped there first received whatsoever miracle, whatsoever healing the person was looking for. And there sat a man who was there for 38 years. The Bible says Jesus came. And when he came, the eyes gazed straight on the man who had been there for 38 years. And yet the Bible in verse 2 says there were many important people. How does Jesus overlook everybody and he only look at this man alone? And the Bible tells me, Jesus came and he said, will you be made whole? And the guy started to explain and he said, there is no one to help me to get in this water. Because the power of my healing is in the water. Like some of you believe that your healing is only with a certain medical doctor or a certain tablet or whatever. But listen to me, there are dimensions when it comes to favor. So today I'm beginning with the, dim the medical dimension of favor. When this favor locate you it doesn't matter the infirmity you have god is able to solve it so number one is medical dimension number two it is what i call material dimension when you find favor with god suddenly whatever you touch begins to prosper oh and people will begin to wonder how you know why divine favor can give you one contract and all of a sudden, for the rest of your life, you can enjoy and prosper. Here is Peter, child of God, who toiled the whole night. The Bible says the whole night he was toiling. And he was a professional fisherman. He knew the pros and the cons of fishing. A new fish is caught in the night. A new fish is caught in the shallow, not in the deep. And after toiling the whole night, is now tired and wasted. And what is he doing? He's washing the nets, ready to go home. And the Bible tells me, Jesus comes across Peter. And as he comes across Peter, he finds him washing the nets. Frustrated and wasted. And Jesus asked him to use the, the, the boat so that he could go aloof and teach the disciples and the people that were there. And Peter leaves him to do that. And afterwards, Jesus comes and he says, listen, Peter, I want you to cast your net into the deep. How do you cast a net into the deep when fish is not caught in the deep? How do you cast a net during the day? When fish is caught in the night. But Peter said, upon your word, I will cast the net. And the Bible says, when they threw in the net, the same water, the same river, the same net. It is the same Peter that cast the net. But how come in the morning, when they cast the net, they enclosed in so much it's because there was a manifestation of the dimension of the material favor. Who? Oh. The question you may ask, what changed? There was a manifestation of the material dimension of the favor of God. Third dimension of the favor of God is what I call the marital dimension. 
and I'm now going to talk to every single person watching me right now and every married person right now that is watching me. If you have been considered barren, listen to me. Some people in their marriages, they have a challenge of children. Some people are single, they cannot find the right person. But there is what we call the marital dimension of favor. When you look at Hannah, she's married and she hasn't given the husband a child. And one of the things sometimes that will weaken a woman is when she desires a child and the child cannot come. And they are seated with the husband and they want to hear the sound of the child. And the child is not there. The pressure comes a lot on women. The pressure comes a lot on the family. And this was the situation in the life of Hannah. Until the husband of Hannah was even old. And when Hannah's husband was old, and at the end of the day, what you need to understand here is that there was no way Hannah could be able to say it was Elkanah's problem because Elkanah had children with Penina. So it wasn't Elkanah's problem, it was Hannah's problem because the Lord had shut her home. But I want you to hear me. Where there is what we call the marital dimension of favor, God cannot deny you the benefits of marriage. Ah, the mental dimension of favor. When you look at that scripture, you're going to find something. When we talk about the mental dimension of favor, when God decides to favor you mentally, oh, Makayabo, suddenly you begin to have wisdom. You, have, you cannot explain. You start to solve problems you cannot solve. Listen to me. When God gives you a mental favor, you can join a company and people have been there long, God can give you power and ability to start to solve the problems of that company and to bring in some, some strategies that start to bring in more income than even the people qualified for it. Why? Because God has given you what we call the mental dimension of favor. And when you get that kind of favor, it is very difficult for anyone to get rid of you. The company can throw everyone, but they say, Lo, Agaenda Olo. Why? Because they understand that this is the brain master behind our operation. And when you ask yourself, how did I reach there? You have never even gone to school for that. It is just a dimension of mental favor which God has released upon you. And another dimension, this is going to go to people that are serving God. Ministerial dimension of favor. Which a lot of people today don't understand. That you can begin a ministry which is supposed to grow after 20 years and you grow it in two years. It's a ministerial dimension of favor. You can be in the music and within two years you are known everywhere. You, you can start a church and evangelist and you start to fill stadiums in less than five years. It's a ministerial dimension of favor which God has released upon you. Last week I explained to you and I said... Paul did not go to any church. Paul, according to Acts chapter number 9, he was on his way to Damascus to persecute the church even more. But Jesus released a ministerial dimension of favor on a murderer. Oh. And this guy, after he got saved on his way to Damascus, the Bible tells me, he preached the gospel to the Gentiles. He was in prison time and again because of the gospel. He wrote half of the New Testament alone. When Peter was not even a murderer, could not write, he wrote two books. When James could not only write about one book, and Matthew could only write one, and Mark could only write one. And you ask yourself a question, how come a murderer, a man with a bad background, wrote half of the New Testament? Ministerial dimension of faith. I come to the last one. That is what I call the manifold dimension of favor. Manifold dimension of favor. M-A-N, manifold. Manifold dimension of favor is all round favor. When we study about the man called Joseph, he had what we call all-round favor. He was never sick till he died. It is not recorded in the Bible that Joseph was sick one day. As the only man who was never sick from birth 
to death till he died. Oh, Makaya Bosha. Joseph was a man with a manfold dimension of favor. Glory to God. If you read Genesis 45 from verse 4 to 13, Joseph said, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. And he sent to his father and he said, Come with all your family and I will feed you for the rest of your life. How do you tell your relatives and say, Come with all the family? Me, I'll feed you until you die. Genesis 45. Because he was a man of manifold dimension of favor. Listen to me, child of God. When you have got these dimensions of favor, you are like, you are not natural. You become supernatural. It's difficult for people to understand you. You become a mystery to people. When people look at you, they have got questions. How come now? How do you make it? How come your things, they just fall in place? Because why? There are dimensions of favor that are manifesting in your life. Oh, Makaya Boha.